Hello everybody, welcome to this um, this NBA draft video. Um, this is not a mock draft, okay? I want to say that right away. This is not a mock draft. This is a, um, a draft board. So, um, so yeah, so basically upon this, this is, uh, like I said, draft board, not a mock draft, just ranking the players. And the way that I did it is uh, it's tier rankings. So like I have them based off of like different tiers, but it's also not tier rankings because I do have them ranked. Like like the numbers are how I have them, but I would not be mad say if you like switch them up a little bit within that tier. Um, and the things I'm basing it off of is potential, current ability, and like just my gut feeling. Like if there's just something I can't explain about them, then that's the um that's that gut feeling part. Um, this will be probably the most boring PowerPoint, like, by looks you've ever seen. But, hey, trying something. Um, but yeah, that's about it, and let's get right into it. Erp. Jeez. Okay, went too far. So, Tier 1. These are players that can go with the number one overall pick. And those players are the same three as always. James Wiseman, Anthony Edwards, and LaMelo Ball. So this is my order. I have James Wiseman at number one. Um, I do believe he is the best player in this draft. I do believe he has the second most potential in this draft. And um, I think if he was being, if this was like five, ten, five to ten years earlier, he would be unquestionable, unquestionably the number one pick. But um, with this lack of games and then. Him being like a center in this um, in an era that's trying kind of like transitioning from a typical center, which Wiseman is for the most part. He can stretch the floor a bit, but yeah. So I, I if this was ten years earlier, he would be the unquestioned number one. But I still think he's he's an amazing player. I think there's a good chance he wins some All NBA awards. Um, he might compete for some defense players. Um, he should be a very good player. Anthony Edwards, I have at number two. He has the least potential out of these three, but um, his potential is still extremely high. I like his offense better than I like his scoring ability better than Lamelo Ball's, and I like his defense better than Lamelo's, and that's why he's ahead of number three Lamelo Ball, who does have the biggest potential out of everyone in this draft class. I just there's no other way to say it. Lamelo is the big has the biggest potential. Um. But he also could very well be a bust. Um, we've seen with his brother Lonzo was supposed to be the next Magic Johnson. I would think was a constant comparison, and now he's not. He's not getting ten points a game. He's pretty pretty good passer, which I think we can expect from Lamelo, who, who should be a great passer, especially in the NBA. Should be a great passer, but um, yeah, there's also a pretty big bust potential with Lamelo. So now if this would load, let's see, yeah, these are high potential players. These are players that are very good players that should be taken in this, in the lottery. That that would be like lottery players. Um, this is probably the longest list, the longest tier, biggest tier, but here we go. Um, number four, I have Onyeka Kungwu. Um, great potential. She should be an amazing defender. And he, like, I know I said Wiseman might. Kung Wu should compete for defense players of the years. That's the expectation I have for him as a great rim protector. A little bit undersized, not as big as Wiseman, not as tall as Wiseman. Bigger, though. Um, should be a great defender and has, he's at more of a traditional back-to-the-basket center. Can't really stretch the floor too much, but still has great potential, especially in, for a team in need of the center. Like the Celtics, I should put my Celtics jersey on. I am a Celtics fan, so I'm really hoping he, like the Celtics trade up to get him or something. But for a team that needs a center, the Hornets should be a great fit, fit there. Number five, Killian Hayes. Probably has as much potential as Anthony Edwards, if not more. Um, he's a little bit of an unknown player. We, well, and the fact that he, he's European, we don't know as much about him as we do with um, some of the players that played in the United States. Um, but the potential is so high 
insanely high. Um, great offensive threat. Um, not too bad on defense. Big point guard, I think, has insane potential. And if um, if he goes to the right team, can have it, it could probably be the best point guard from this draft. Number six, Obi Toppin, the best player in college basketball. Um, he is a six nine power forward that can play. Um, he can play the small forward, play the power forward. Uh, ideally, the power forward would be spot like someone like a Draymond Green, except for um, not as defensively oriented like Draymond Green, but not Draymond Green. The offensive version of Draymond Green. That's what I view Obi Toppin as personally. That may not be how everybody else sees him, but that's he can move. Um, he great in transition. Um, would be great with the Bulls team. That's someone like a young power forward, small, like small forward, power forward. Like you could run. Um, you could have like Kobe White, Zach Levine, Obi Toppin, Markinen, and um, Wendell Carter Jr. Or um, move Laurie to the five, um, Toppin to the four, uh, and then have. Um, shoot. Forgot their small forward. Whoever the Bulls small forward is right now, and have that have them run it like that. Um, dang, that's Otto Porter. That's who it is, right? Yeah, Otto Porter run the small forward. Um, but yeah, it should that would be a great fit for Obi Toppin. I think I know the Knicks are dying to get him at eight. I don't know if he falls that far, but anyway, Obi Toppin should be a pretty solid player. Seven, Tyrese Halliburton, probably like the. Um, I don't know what I'm trying to say. He's probably one of the. Um, He's probably the third best point guard. Should be the third best point guard, almost no matter what. Um, like at worst, or the third best guard. Um, I think he's he doesn't have the potential that Killian Hayes does, but he's pretty dang close. Um, he can play both the point guard and the shooting guard. Great defender, great defense. Like pairing him up with somebody like Trey Young with the Hawks, that would be an amazing pairing. I would love to see that. I really like Tyrese Halliburton, um, fan of his, but um, yeah, I have Tyrese Halliburton at seven, eight. Denny of Deha. Um, this is I see people have him at a lot at number four, and five. I just I don't see it. I earlier this summer I did a, I looked at advanced advanced statistics, and Denny just didn't check off all the boxes that I wanted him to. And I was fairly disappointed. And there's just too many question marks. His offense has potential. Um, like, say we compare him to someone like Luka Doncic, just because of the foreign player, you know, the EuroLeague style, that, that that's the only reason I'm comparing him. So if we compare him to Luka Doncic, um, Avdia doesn't have the offensive potential, the offensive firepower that Doncic does, but Avdia is a slightly better defender. Um, the one thing that really does help him, and pushes, like I was debating between him and a Coral for a while. Um, in fact, I had a Coral higher than him for a couple months. But um, one thing that pushes a Via higher is his height, six nine, six ten, some some places even haven't listed, and that you just that's just pr pretty amazing. And I have him pretty. Uh, I, he is better. I would say he's a better prospect than a Coral, and cements him in the top ten. At nine, I do have Isaac Okoro, great defender, um, one of the better defenders in this draft class, um, along with two of the players that I will, so I'll say best wing, one of the better wing defenders, along with two of the players still in tier two. And Okoro's defense, Okoro's offense isn't quite there. Um, he can't, not the greatest um, three point shooter, but can score pretty well from inside. Um, he is again. His defense is the main selling point. So um, maybe a team like the Hawks, I uh, could use him for the defensive purposes. But um, yeah, that'd be interesting to see where he falls. Number ten, Devin Vassell. The, he is probably my probably my favorite player in this draft. One of my favorite players in this draft. Um, his defense, very good, very talented defender. His offense, great offensive potential. Um, I think was the second leading scorer on Florida State this year, um, and should help it, whatever team he gets drafted to. Whether it's as a, a starting shooting guard, 
maybe not won't we'll be the greatest starting shooting guard, but as a sixth, seventh man off the bench, it should be great for him. But yeah, Devin Vassell, I have him at number 10. Great potential. At 11, Precious Achua. I, I also like Achua. I am I tend to be just like everybody. But, uh, um, yeah, I like, like, but Devin Vassell, like this, I love Devin Vassell. Um, Precious Achua, like his game. Um, a little undersized for the power forward. I think he's 6'9", if I went last check. Granted, so is Obi talking, but the way that Achua likes to play is more similar to that of a Dream on Green, just a couple inches taller. Um, very defense-oriented. Um, offensive skill is similar to, I'd say, maybe a little Marcus Aldridge. Um, doesn't quite have the shooting touch that Aldridge has, but likes to post up. To, uh, prefers to attack. But um, the defense is, again, his main selling point, like a Coro. But, um, yeah, I have him at number 11 just due to... Um, I think he has the great potential. Number 12, Patrick Williams. Um, he is... I was watching... Um, I think... It was either um, the Flight Mike or Six Rings of Steel that kind of compared uh, Patrick Williams' his defense coming out of college to that of Kawhi Leonard's, where it's that's his main selling point. You know, I keep saying that defense is the main selling point. Patrick Williams is an amazing offensive player. Like so this would probably be the closest we have seen to Kawhi Leonard for a while, and um, yeah, I think the potential there is amazing. And again, like Devin Vassell, those two are very similar players, very similar in height, same school, very similar players, I would say. Both of them have amazing potential and will probably help their whoever drafts them a lot. Come on, Google Slides. Just... Okay, tier three. These are the guys that are solid first rounders. Like, that could, like the top, these, the top ones, the top few of these guys could get in, sneak into the lottery. But these guys are definitely, should not fall out of the um, first round. Uh, at 13, I have Tyrese Maxey. Um, his, I would think, I think someone like um, Drew Holiday, a little bit, bit shorter. Um, he's only 6'3". But Tyrese Maxey can play the point guard and the shooting guard. His listed position is a shooting guard. But he's just fairly small for that for the NBA. And um, we'll need to get better. At, we'll need to learn more how to um, develop as a point We'll need to develop as a point guard if he wants to continue play, seeing significant minutes. Um, unless they're playing next to playing with someone who is a taller point guard, maybe like Lonzo Ball, like Ben Simmons. Um, those taller point guards would benefit Tyrese Maxey because of the defensive liability there. Um, but yeah, he still has amazing potential, great offensive player. But um, yeah, little high, decently high ceiling, but still again a pretty pretty low floor. Now, um, Kira Lewis, or is it? Yeah, it's Kira, Kira Lewis, Jr. I believe I forgot the junior in there. I love Kira Lewis Jr. This, I think he will be an amazing player, like similar to Colin Sexton. Um, not only because they both went to Alabama, but they're both um, fast, shifty, um, in transition. A great, um, well not great, very solid defensive players I would say. Um, at least they have the potential to be great defensive players with, with steals and decent on-ball defenders. Um, now Kira can't create too much for himself in a half-court set and will definitely need to work on it. But the potential, like, that's a lot of what this draft is, the potential. Like, there's no real, like, outside of the top three, there's no real, in fact, no one is a guarantee in this draft. I think, like, the most, like, prompt, like, the most NBA-ready would probably be Obi Toppin. I would think, let me just, this Okay, it's going backwards or forwards. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I like James Wiseman. I think James Wiseman will be great, but um, I think Obi Toppin is the most NBA ready out of just about everyone, and like the most like you know what you're gonna get. Every, with everybody else, you don't know, and like this draft is all potential. 
So if I bring up potential a lot, that's just because that's how this draft played out. Um, I'm, from what I know, the next year's draft is a bit more like deeper and a bit more solid prospects than we, that we should know a bit more about. But we're here now in 2020. And with that takes us to 15, Aaron Nesmith. Nesmith, I think it's Nesmith. He is probably the best um, wing shooter, if not just shooter, in this draft. Um, in Vanderbilt, he did have to carry a load, uh, the offensive load, but did fairly well. He had um, a 35, I think it was a 36%, 30-point percentage, which did drop from um, his freshman year. But still, great shooter, um, should help anyone, that like any wing position, anyone who needs a wing position, whether it's off the solid uh, shooter off the bench or like a solid team that's just missing. Like, like if you, uh, to build a team around like someone like LeBron, Giannis, Ben Simmons, like someone that can stretch the floor, Aaron Nesmith, perfect fit. 16, Sadiq Bey. Um, similar to Aaron Nesmith, um, a bit more of the power forward role for Bay, but can shoot the ball, can, uh, great stretching up the floor, um, can play defense fairly well, um, not great in the post defensively, but on the wings, not bad. Um, yeah, fairly solid prospect, uh, not too much potential here, but still very, a, high, a higher floor. He's one of the ones that shouldn't I would say he has a higher floor than a lot of players in this draft. His ceiling not as high as they sound like Aaron, like any of the other 15 I mentioned before him or many of the others I haven't mentioned yet. But number 17, Josh Green. He has the potential to be great, I believe. He has one of the more higher potentials in this draft. That should, that should, that should be what I do. There's another video just ranking them off potential. But, um... Yeah, 17, Josh Green. Excuse me. Uh, in Arizona, he just did a little bit of everything. Like, there was basically nothing he didn't do. He played defense. He had um, offensive spurts. He did have his bad games, which were which came a bit more often than I would have liked to see. But um, but the defense was always there. The heart, the hustle was always there. I loved watching Josh Green play on the couple games that I did see. And I really enjoyed him as a prospect. And I... Hope I don't know what I'm trying to say here. It's it's late. I'm tired. But um yeah, Josh Green should be a very solid prospect. 18, Cole Anthony. He gets a lot of backlash from his previous his last season at UNC. But I don't think that's really his fault. I, if you go and look at that roster, I he did great. I mean, there was just no one on um on UNC that could just help that could help him. And I think considering all that, Cole Anthony did an amazing job. Um he didn't have the assist numbers that you want to see from a point guard, but I think in the NBA that'll change. Like if you put him around good players like I, I think he will be taken with the range that he's projected to be in. And then he'll have solid offensive teammates to work with and will get more assists. So don't have that be too much of a concern. But um again, defense not quite there. Uh I and like uh, the gut feeling I mentioned earlier, just not quite isn't like my gut just isn't all in on Cole Anthony yet. That's why he's lower in tier three, but anywhere from thirteen to eighteen, great fit for him. Okay, tier four. These are the late first rounders. Um, yes, I did go back just to see what I called this tier. These are the guys that could slip in to the second round. But I think should be fairly, fairly guaranteed first round picks. And we'll start with number nineteen, R.J. Hampton, uh, played in the NBA, NBL with um, Lamelo Ball, and did not play good. Did not play great at all. Um, a huge drop off from what we expected. Like going in, like the way too early mock drafts, like um, and like player rankings when he was in high school. I think had him at number two or number three, like right up there with um, Ball and Wiseman. But he has fallen all the way to 19 for me because of the season he had in the, in Australia. But I'm kind of hoping it's only because it just wasn't the right fit, right style of play for him. 
and he probably would have done better if he had come if he had played in the USA. Maybe played with Cole Anthony and UNC. That would have been pretty nice to see, I think. But Hampton, tall guard, huge potential. Can I think can play? Um, I haven't done too much research on him personally, but um, I think he can play on uh, as the point guard, as the shooting guard, um, tall enough to. So I great potential, but just the production I I saw against professional players just wasn't there. Jalen Smith, a power forward from Maryland. Um, again, high potential, as a lot of these players are, but again, a low floor. Um, he's about he's six ten, I believe. Good rim, good rim protector, very good defensive piece. Great if like you have a weaker front court defensively, Jalen Smith should bring up the defensive intensity, whether it's starter off the bench, more than likely off the bench, but should bring great defensive intensity intensity especially for a post defender. Tyrell Terry is someone I've been up and down on the entire time. Uh, typically more down than up. Uh, just because I don't know about him. Like, I know more about Alexa Bukusevsky than I do Tyrell Terry. But on every mock draft video, every big board video I see, I see people saying, oh, Tyrell Terry should be higher. He should be higher. And I'm going to buy into that a little bit. Um, going to this, I had him about 25, 26-ish area. I'm going to move him up to 21. Um, his, this could be something like what we saw. Could be something. Could. With um, Stephen Curry. Um, Curry was ranked a bit higher due to the success that um, he had in the, um, in the NCAA tournament. But we didn't get to see anything like that from Tyrell Terry. I don't know if Stanford would have been able would have been in the tournament, but I think if they had gone on a magical run, Tyrell Terry would have been ranked in the teens. But um, he is a smaller point guard and can shoot the lights out. Okay, so I'm not gonna say he's gonna be Stephen Curry, but there are definite par parallels to Tyrell Terry, and I would not be surprised if. Maybe he took over that Lou Will six-man role, like the, just the dominant six-man um, on good teams. He would, I think he has the potential to help win an NBA championship for a franchise. Um, number 22, Jaden McDaniels. Uh, I view him as a similar prospect to Jalen Smith, uh, both around 6'10 power forwards, decent rim protectors. But McDaniels is more of the raw talent. Um, we don't know who he's going to be. I, we know, we are as certain about his game as we are with a lot of foreign players in this position, like Aleska Pokusevsky, we'll talk about in a second. Um, we don't know if, what we've seen from McDaniels is great offensive spurts and then horrible offensive spurts. Great defensive games, horrible def defensive games. Very raw prospect. But with, given the right coaching, which being drafted this low, he should get good coaching. Um, can develop into a very nice piece. Now, Alexei Pukusevsky, who I've mentioned twice, I believe. Um, seven foot power forward, can shoot the lights out. Uh, maybe not as good as Terry or Neesmith, or Nesmith, however you say it, Aaron Nesmith. Um, but can shoot. He can, great offensive talent, not great defensively, needs to put on some weight. Needs to put on a lot of muscle. But, um,. Similar to like a Kevin Durant type build, then, like coming out of college. That's except for like Pokusevsky hasn't seen the light of day before. He's more paler than I am up here. But um, yeah, Pokusevsky, great potential, um, great stretch for, stretch four, um, should be a fairly solid pick. Nico Mannion at twenty four. Again, like same with RJ Hampton, there was a lot of hype surrounding Mannion and this the Arizona Wildcats team. And he just didn't produce in Arizona. I don't know what it was, but Mannion's numbers in Arizona weren't where we wanted them to be. Um, but I think he has the potential. I would love to see him on the Jazz playing next to um, Donovan Mitchell. Just seeing that offensive uh, tandem work very well together. 
Um, that would be something I'd really like to see. Trey Jones is someone else I would like to see on the Jazz, having that a great offense and defensive backcourt. I would, yeah, I would love to see Nico Mannion. Oh yeah, my my Jazz jersey, probably my second favorite team because my mom grew up in Salt Lake. So yeah, I even have a Jazz lamp. I keep forgetting I have that. But um, yeah, I would love to see Mannion on the Jazz. Um, yeah, twenty-five Theo Maladin, Maladon. Sorry, um, another high potential point guard um, from overseas. Again, don't know too much about him. That's my bad. But um, I don't like what I've seen and what I've read about him in terms of being a higher potential, a higher, um, higher prospect. And that's why he's fallen all the way down to 25. Decent offensive potential, decent defensive potential. Well, good, good potential on offense. Um, should, I don't know how much he'll grow as a defender. But um, yeah, unless I'm getting confused, which I very well could be. But I don't think he's in my eyes, isn't a great defender. And that's why he's fallen down to 25th. And again, this is stupid. So, tier 5. Let um, the last of the first rounders, the late first, first rounders, yeah, four of these guys, as I just mentioned, Trey Jones, would love to see him on the Jazz with Donovan Mitchell. That pairing would be amazing. I would love to watch it. Um, I've, I, my dad is a Duke fan. Well, he's a Coach K fan. So I watch a lot of two basketball games, and Trey Jones just impresses me every single time. Uh, I love the way he plays. I probably should have ranked him higher, if I'm being honest. But I put him here. Um, yeah, uh, very solid prospect. He is a bit older. Uh, by that I mean he's a sophomore. How dare he? How dare he didn't go out in his first year? Which I think he, he could have gone out last year and would have been... Pretty good, pretty highly ranked. Um, yeah, he's on yeah twenty sixth on my big board. Um, yeah, this leads me to another point guard, Jameis Ramsey, from Texas Tech. I again have Texas Tech fan because um, there's a chance I'll go there for college next year. There's a chance I don't know, but um, but yeah, Ramsey loved watching him play. Like Trey Jones, I watched I watched quite a few Texas Tech Texas Tech games. And Ramsey, again, always impressed. Great hustle. Great grit. I just loved watching him play. Um, not the most consistent offensive player. At least what I would like to see. But still, very solid prospect. 28, Isaiah Stewart. Center from Washington. Undersized, I think 6'9", I believe. But still, uh, solid prospect. Um, again, don't know too much about him. But yeah, I think he's a solid prospect. Um, better on offense than defense, from what I remember. But yeah, that's I have him at 28 just because I don't know too much about him. And I'm not going to pretend like I know too much about him. 29, Desmond Bain. Again, don't know too much about him, but I do know he has been rising. He's done whatever he's done in the last couple weeks. Has boosted his draft stock way up. Just did these interviews um, with his performances and in individual workouts. And... Um, I'm going to buy into the hype a little bit, move him up into the um, first round. And I think he can be a very solid prospect, I think both defensively and offensively. Again, don't know too much, so I can't necessarily say for sure. But um, yeah, and that's a common theme you'll see with everybody else. Don't know too much about him. But um, yeah, here we are, tier six, borderline first rounders. Um, Robert Woodard the this, uh, this second was someone I was always high on. Until I looked a bit deeper and realized I don't think he has too much potential. I think the player that you will draft on draft night is the player you will have for the next couple of years. Like Nate, like Kevin Knox. like That's the, the player that the Knicks drafted is the player that they still have for the most part. There hasn't been too much growth um, in Knox. And I don't project too much growth for Woodard. But um, that could just be me. But... um. I think because this draft is so shallow, he couldn't fall into the first round. Now, the rest of these guys have much higher potentials than I, than Woodard does, uh, starting with Leandro Bomaro. Again, uh, as someone I haven't, have never really been too high on. Um, everyone else I've seen has just been uh, like the late first rounder, and that's pretty much where I have him, the first pick in the second round. I th uh, shooting guard, 
believe he's a great shooter. Um, don't know how well that will translate to the NBA game. Um, but I'm very interested to see him play. And I hope he can do great things. Peyton Pritchard, Oregon. Um, yeah, played very well. Um, what I was trying to remember is, because I live in New Mexico, another fandom. Um, New Mexico, we had uh, someone, dang, I just blinked on his name, but um, transferred to Oregon and played very well with Pritchard. Um, and in the one game I watched, Pritchard played pretty dang good. So I like Peyton Pritchard. Um, solid point guard prospect um, coming off the bench. Just some depth there. And shouldn't disappoint too much. Cassius Winston, um, someone else who like uh, Trey Jones, could have come out. I think any of freshman after his freshman sophomore or junior year, um, but chose to stick it out all four years. I think he won the Wooden Award um, as a junior, if I'm not mistaken, as the best player in college basketball. Um, but yeah, he's a great leader. Um, is was the soul of that Michigan State team. Now they'll have to find someone else, but just an excellent leader, great basketball IQ, and that should be good enough to land him a spot on an NBA team. Maybe he'd be someone like Rondo, like just someone for like the most part staying quiet, but like a great leader, like like the leadership voice, um, offensive, like um, great, a uh, good offensive point guard, high basketball IQ. That was just something I just made up in my mind right there. But, um, yeah, 34, Zeke Naji, the um, power forward center from Arizona. Again, like both other Arizona prospects we've seen, um, Josh Green and Nico, uh, Nico Mannion, has shown flashes of greatness, but has also hasn't just been consistent enough in order to get him to the top um, the, like, solid first rounder. Um, I think if he had, was more much more consistent, especially in this draft class, could have been picked in the mid-teens. But the consistency needs to be there, and it just wasn't in Arizona. So that's why he's all the way down at 34. Uh, 35, Tyler Bay. A, sm a shorter uh, power forward, which demonstrated you know, great offensive flashes. Um, played for Colorado, so the attention around him hasn't been too much. Um, there was no real hype around Colorado. And... Um, that might have hurt him a little bit, but still the offense protection needed to be there, and defense as well, and it wasn't always there from what I know. Again, I'm not going to act like I know too much about him, and I will, as you'll see with everybody else, I will make a complete BS. It's just going to happen, because I want to act smart. That's why I got the glasses. I mean, I kind of need these. I mean, I could squint. But, um, but yeah, I just want to be smart. 36, Cassius Stanley. He is someone that has fallen a lot. Um, I typically see him like around the 40th pick in mock drafts, 45, 50th. I just I love the potential of Cassius Stanley. He's a 6'6 shooting guard, I think. 6'7, maybe. Um, and has shown flashes. I mean, he got recruited by Duke for a reason. I mean, that's like great potential right there um but yeah great athlete flying out of the gym probably could see him in a couple dunk contests and that could be his one claim to fame but still i think it's a solid solid pickup especially at the um in the early second round and why did i expect that to work tier number seven dark horse first rounders um this is the last yeah this is the last um last group of people and these are the players that um, maybe just had an amazing workout with one of the teams and that could um, like like had an amazing workout with the Lakers the um, the Knicks who are had the later pick the Celtics um, Bucks I think are picking later in the draft but um yeah that had just great workout with these teams and get picked Starting off, Malachi Flynn, San Diego State. Um, I love him because he played in the Mountain West Conference. And as a Lobos fan, I'm a fan of three college, three college teams. Uh, Wisconsin, Texas Tech, and UNM. But um, I've, I watched him and... Um, 
shoot the U Sam Merrill play uh, against the Lobos, and they did pretty well. Granted, it was against the UNM Lobos, so. Um, but both of them are just insane players. Great uh, facilitators on uh, are great. Just um, they're ball. They're they do both do well with the ball in their hands. Um, you, obviously, Sam Merrill didn't quite make this list. It was very close. It was very close between him and Xavier Tillman. But um, yeah, Malachi Flynn at number thirty-seven can be a very dominant point guard. Um, again, one great workout, move into the first round. Uh, number thirty-eight and thirty-nine. I'm going to combine them together here. Uh, Vernon Carey and Udoka Azubike. Um, Vernon, the freshman uh, for Duke, again had amazing potential, um, and still has amazing potential, and can be a great post defender. Um, same with Udoka Azubike. I think he's been one of college's most dominant players over the last four years, and with seven foot frame, amazing rim protector. Um, both of them should have that defense ability, um, and I, Udoka for sure is more of a back to the basket type player, and I think that's that hurts him a lot now. I think Vernon Carey can stretch the floor a bit more, but these two I think are very, very close, um, closely rated prospects. Now two more big men, Daniel Oturo and Paul Reed. Um, both both big men I think are um, criminally underrated. Um, well, I shouldn't say that because they're still second round picks. Are both underrated. Um, Oturo from Minnesota, solid big man. I'm not gonna pretend like I know too much about him, and I do think he's underrated just because no one's talking about him. And I, from what I have read, the few things that I have, he needs to be talked about more. If you like, just if you go and look at his stats, they've been great. Um, at least his senior or his last two years, sorry. Um, but yeah, Oturo should be a mid to early, early to mid second rounder. Same with Paul Reed from uh, DePaul, I believe. Um, has not gotten the credit he deserves. And again, like Oturo, should be a um, early to mid second rounder. Um, Grant Riddler, another smaller school uh, prospect, has. Shown flat has obviously dominated his uh, competition level, but we don't know exactly what he will be in terms of um, in terms of like the, translating to the NBA against much better competition, and that hurts him quite a bit and falls to this um, to this the uh, back two thirds of the draft, but yeah, had, can be a great player. And finally, number 43, Xavier Tillman from Michigan State. A bit undersized, but again, like oh, Cashman Wilson, has put up numbers and has helped Michigan State be one of the best teams in college. Um, yeah, and I think he deserves a spot on the and on an NBA team. But yeah, that is it. As you see, I'm, well, you can't see, but I'm pressing the button and I'm clicking. Uh, there is nothing else. It is slide 16 of 16. Um, I thank you all very much for watching. I, don't know the exact time, but I, it's a longer video. I can just tell. Um, yeah, thank you all for watching, and I will see you later. Adios.